Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about hedging and we're going to find the hedge ratio, the optimal hedge ratio. Okay, so what we need to do is to define a relationship between the spot and futures price. Okay, so what do we have here? We have one model which is in the levels of the uh, spot price and the futures price and this is a one period hedge and what we need to do is that um, if we had found the optimal hedge ratio the better in this regression then most probably we would have problems with heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation in the errors. Try to omit that problem, uh, we take the differences. We take the differences uh, of both the spot price and the futures price. And mind you, we take the, this is the one period futures price and we deduct the one period futures price from the last period so we don't take the well the futures price with the same well the same maturity date okay if we do this uh, we are most probably um, modeling a stationary time series so we don't have any problems with non-stationarity or heteroscedasticity or autocorrelated errors, right? So if you have data, you can run this regression and get the optimal hedge ratio, the beta star. Beta star can also be written as or estimated by uh, the correlation between the spot price or the difference in spot price and the difference in futures price times the ratio of the volatility of the spot price and the volatility of the futures price. But we're going to look at an example and we have some data from the sugar market and the contract size is 120,000 pounds of sugar and the prices are in, in US, doll US dollars per pound. So we have 30 data instances and uh, we have the spot price, we have the futures price and then we take the difference, okay? Uh, mind you that the difference here is basically some something you would know in November, okay? So these differences, they are uh, skewed by one period. This is the, is the dif difference for November 1st, okay? But, uh, we don't want a gap here because the regression uh, method in Excel uh, does not cope with uh, missing values very easily. So why do we use differences and not returns? Well, you could use returns, but um, we're trying to model the basis risk in this case. So this model will give us the basis risk uh, at time t minus one. Okay, so it will give you the basis risk at the instance you are committing to the hedge. For example, if you want 120,000 pounds of sugar in one month, you don't need the hedge ratio if you don't care about the basis risk. You just buy one contract of 
uh, sugar and sit out. But if you are worried that the bases will move at a disadvantage to your position, uh, then you would like to find the optimal hedge ratio. And using differences instead of returns is somewhat of an uh, industry standard. So let's get to it. Uh, we have the model. The let's see if I can find it. We have a model, and we run this regression. We don't care about the alpha. We care about the beta. So let's get to it. We go to data, data analysis, and we go to regression. Okay. And the dependent variable is the delta S. The independent variable is the delta F. Okay. And we have labels. Here. We just put the regression results in a new worksheet. So here we have a summary output. And what we are concerned about is the, the hedge ratio. This is the beta. This is the alpha from our model. So the beta is 1.2099, okay? And the R squared is 0 0.850, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means that for every sugar contract you would like to buy in one month's time, you should buy 1.2099 futures contracts. Okay? If you manage to buy 1.2099 futures contract for every trigger contract you would like to buy in one month's time, then you have a minimum variance position. So let's see if we could find this hedge ratio using our model, but estimating it in a different way. So then we go back to our data set. We type in the standard deviation, and this is the sample standard deviation. It really doesn't matter because it's going to be a ratio, so you could, in theory, use the population standard deviation. That would be no problem, okay? So, we have the standard deviation of all the time series, and we have the correlation. between the spot price and the futures price, okay? So beware that the standard deviation is different when you look at differences, okay? So what is the hedge ratio? It's equal to the uh, correlation times the standard deviation of the spot price divided by the standard deviation of the futures price. And you see that the uh, hedge ratio is exactly the same as from the regression we got. And you see that the uh, correlation 
is 0 0.92209 and you can find that from the regression because here you have the r squared and r squared is really r for rho the greek letter rho which means uh, correlation so if you take the square root of this you should get the correlation 0.922 exactly what we got here just be aware that uh, if you have a long time until you expect to do business then you would use a long futures contract to uh, estimate the hedge ratio but um, as time passes uh, you have to use a shorter and shorter maturity uh, futures to estimate to re-estimate the optimal hedge ratio because if you have four months to maturity until you expect to do business and you use a four month contract then you estimate uh, correlation and you estimate the standard deviations and and you get the hedge ratio but after one month uh, this contract is a three month contract because you have three months until you you are going to do business so then probably the three month contract contains more information about or more accurate information about the future spot price so then you should re-estimate the hedge ratio okay and every month you should do this redo the hedge ratio because it's going to be more and more accurate so i really hope that you got something from this video and take care bye